Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Hi. Yes. Hi. Hi. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Welcome, Adrian, and welcome everyone else to another MIDF conversation, where we host a lunchtime conversation between MIDF and captains of industry and thought leaders. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a keto lunch for the intellect. No carbs, no starch, just a pure protein and some greens as food for thought. I would like to welcome all our participants to today's, uh, today's conversation. The entrepreneurs, CEOs, fund managers, and finance and business and professional finance and business professionals that have tuned in, the individual investors who are investing their own hard earned money, members of the media, students, especially those studying math or economics, colleagues, and, and in fact, everyone else. So thank you for all joining us uh, today. And I am delighted that we have with us today Mr. Adriano, the CEO of Mr. DIY, and someone I've known for quite some time and perhaps we won't say how quite how long we've known each other Adrian but quite some time but welcome Adrian thank you for thank you for coming on thank you Dato Sharon it's a pleasure to, to, to be on the on the show together with you thank you right so Adrian I mean Adrian and I go back for for a bit and uh, you know he was my client uh, when I was a lawyer and we were colleagues. And now, of course, he is the CEO of Mr. DIY and, and a phenomenal, phenomenal success story. Adrian, I was just speaking today and based on yesterday's closing uh, uh, price close, um, Mr. DIY is number 19 uh, in market capitalization uh, in, in, in Malaysia. So huge congratulations. You also now a member of the index link stock only eight months after we listed again, you know, fantastic, fantastic results. And, you know, and I thought, I was looking and I thought, okay, so maybe if you, if you take out the GLCs and the banks, I mean, you really are way up there in terms of stock, but actually you're even bigger than GLCs and the banks. In fact, there are only four banks larger than you in market cap. You're bigger in market cap than all the other banks. And you're bigger in market cap than some of the giant GLCs we used to court as, as bankers. I mean, you're bigger than telecom. I mean, that's, that's a phenomenal success. So really, really congratulations, Adrian. And what we'd like to do today, I think, is to talk a, about how we have lots of entrepreneurs who are, who are, uh, who are tuned in. And we'd like to know how you can grow a business from being uh, uh, you know, a few shops to something like you know, over 800 over 800 shops, uh, 800 outlets throughout Malaysia. And, and second, really, how, 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 how you did it. You know, how does someone who starts, starts off as a, as a finance professional uh, end, up, end up running you know, the, one of the largest companies in, 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 in Malaysia and set to grow even bigger and bigger given your, your, your growth? So maybe, maybe, maybe let's start, Adrian. We're just t talking a little bit about Mr. DIY and what Mr. DIY does. I mean, everyone's gone there uh, and, and bought something from Mr. DIY, I'm sure. But won't you talk to us a little bit about what, what Mr. DIY does? Sure. Thank you, Dr. Sharon. So, you know, our business model is quite straightforward. Uh, we are a monoline business, uh, primarily focused on home improvement retailing. Our, our model really is to service the masses. So, you know, whether you're male or female, whether you are, you know, uh, you live in the city or you live in the country, uh, through all age groups from, you know, young children all the way up to, you know, retirees, you know, we are basically there as a, as a business to serve you. Uh, the product that we offer, you know, is typically non-grocery, either consumable or, you know, product that you can, that is useful in your home, uh, in your daily life, in your office, in that daily life, and so on and so forth. The idea really is to, uh, to offer product that, you know, surrounds us in, in what we do on a daily basis. So, you know, today uh, we operate a, a business with, you know, 800 odd short stores, you know, throughout the country. Uh, we, have, uh, we, are, we, we have taken the view that, uh, you know, rather than uh, necessarily focus on, on e-commerce alone, you know, we are focusing on convenience, convenience of being close to you, close to uh, neighborhoods where, where the population live in, in, in order to service, you know, our, our customers. The, Product, the, the, the whole raison d'etre for us is to, you know, offer product, you know, in line with our slogan, always low prices. And we are able to, you know, fundamentally do so by uh, being able to use our scale, uh, data, uh, analytics, in order to ensure that, you know, our offering is curated for each store, 
for the population, for the for our customers uh, on, on a mass basis. Uh, at the same time, uh, for us, uh, you know, we uh, get the opportunity because of scale to uh, to purchase product directly from uh, from manufacturers around the world. And that in turn uh, results in us being able to, to drive competitive prices and the benefits of all of that, you know, we typically, you know, offer back to our customers, which, you know, uh, you know, I think everybody, you know, clearly loves a bargain and to the extent that, you know, we can continue to maintain competitive prices that, you know, is, is part of our formula. Gosh, you make it sound so simple, Adrian, but it's not, is it? I mean, <laughs> many, many people have tried to do this and they haven't. I mean, maybe I'd just like to talk about the branches first and we'll get to some of the other stuff about your pricing and, and perhaps products. I mean, you have so you said, over 800 branches. So you've got more branches than there are post offices. You have more branches than any of the banks, you know, Maybank, CIB, whatever. They, all, they only have uh, 300 or so branches. You have over 800. And... Um, you even have three branches in Perlis. Um, nobody has three branches in Perlis. Uh, I, right. I was shocked. I mean, I, you know, I, 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 I go back to Perlis very often. And Perlis only we, just we, had we, it. In, we have two in Labuan and you know, a few in, in three in Langkawi as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> how is that possible? How is that possible? How can you, you go with that? So, and, and you know, one of the things which, which your company shows to us is that many people have before have said that the Malaysian market is too small. I, I, you've proved that's not the case. I mean, the Malaysian market is is think can support eight hundred branches and 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 more, and it can and it can and it can give rise to a market cap of you know over twenty four over twenty four billion ringgit. So, you know, a lot of people clearly underestimate the size of the Malaysian market, and 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 you've got it right. You you know where to sell things. So, how do, how do you decide how to open up stores? And 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 and, and, and you're saying just now you have slightly different products and different stores. With that. How do, how, how, do you, how do you go about doing this? How do you go about just deciding, you know, per list needs three, three shops? And, um, yeah. So I, for us, you know, we have, firstly, I would say, you know, we have a, a very dedicated team of, 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 of colleagues that, you know, work very hard and, you know, are, are always focused on making a difference. And, you know, that's really the, 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 the formula and the starting place for us, having a great team, you know, focus on servicing the customer, focusing on, you know, uh, really making that difference, right? Uh, but, you know, over and above that, you know, we have, you know, very scientific formulas behind, you know, most of what we do uh, in terms of store opening, you know, we are very focused on, 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 on you know, the data that we utilize to, to select sites, population data, you know, uh, family, re residential uh, uh, numbers data, you know, et cetera. And we, we utilize that in order to decide often uh, where to open a store. Uh, we also uh, curate that store offering uh, to match the population. So for example, in, in a mid-sized town, you know, we may have, you know, it may be large enough for us to have a, a, a full Mr. DIY store. Today, we also open stores in you know, rural areas in suburban, you know, in, in, in rural communities. And some of these communities may not be big enough to support a full-size store. And so, you know, we've come up with a new formula called uh, DIY, Mr. DIY Express. Smaller format, you know, typically two to 4,000 square feet, uh, there and ready to service smaller communities. So, you know, we, we utilize the data to decide, you know, what the demand is. We then curate our offering, we curate the store format in order to support that community in a sustainable way. And for us, you know, to be sustainable, clearly, you know, uh, economic sustainability is part of it. But I think more importantly, you know, being able to offer a formula that, that services the community in that neighborhood. And, you know, I think by, by doing so also, um, we are able to, you know, bring uh, modern retailing to rural communities. And, you know, as part of, you know, servicing uh, uh, that community, you know, we curate that for you. Okay. I still don't understand it, how you manage to, to open so many, so many outlets when most people have, 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 have given up. I mean, you know, the, the traditional model was people like 
people opening petrol stations, right? So Shell and everybody else are supposed to have this very advanced algorithm in terms of how, trying to decide you know, which side of the highway you put your, your, your petrol station on and, and how big a petrol station you, you build depending on the catchment area. Um, so so you, you, I'm presuming you, you, you gather this kind of data as well. Is this, is this data you gather yourself, it's proprietary data? Is it, is it stuff you get from, 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 from the government and government census data or all of this? Or is, it, or is it top secret and that's the secret of your Well, no, business? I think it's, it's, not, it's not top secret. It's really all of the above. Mm. But you know, gathering data is part of it, and you know, being able to to utilize that data and interpret it in a way that you know helps us make the right decisions. I think that's the the proprietary aspect of it. You know, how we interpret the data, how we utilize that to decide. You know, we will you know open in this area uh, and so on and so forth. Of course, it's not a perfect science. I have to say, some of it sometimes is art as well. You know, what makes, you know, a store on this side of the road better than a store on that side of the road? Clearly experience comes into the, the equation, not just the data of it. Uh, but, you know, I think a lot of this, uh, you know, has been built over years and years of experience by, you know, the, the operating team that, you know, are at the forefront of those decisions. Um, I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's no secret that, you know, as, as, as the CEO of the company, you know, I don't necessarily view a significant number of stores that we open. We, we, we have an operating team, we have a, you know, a system, we have the analytics behind it, and that helps us make those decisions. I see. So you have like a department in charge of stores? and, and A, a full-time team, a full-time right. team. Right. You know, right. The only role every week, every month, every year is to, is to seek out good sites uh, to help us service the community there. Okay. Um, can I ask, do you, have, do you have any ballpark number in terms of how many stores Malaysia can support? Is that something you... I yeah, mean, I think that, that's really the million dollar question. Right? Hmm. But, you know, I think if you look at the, the, you know, the either home improvement or discount stores uh, relative to population, uh, you know, we are, you know, we continue to be relatively, you know, modest in terms of the number of home improvement stores we have. In, in, in developed markets, you know, it's something of the order of five to 10,000 population per store. Really? You know, wow. We have, you know, you know, for the DIY branded stores, you know, 700 odd stores uh, relative to, a, you know, a population of, of, of 33 million. And so that's about, you know, 45,000 to one for us to give you a sense. Of course, you know, each country is at, you know, a different level of economic maturity and, 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 and those numbers will change accordingly. But, you know, from our perspective, uh, you know, there's a lot of room to go. And certainly the data for us would suggest and the, the payback periods, the economic model uh, on a unit basis, you know, all suggest to us that, you know, there is uh, sufficient and, you know, ample room for growth. Wow. So you can have what? We have forty-five thousand to one now, and developed markets are seven thousand to one. So you could grow seven times more, presumably. If you do it on a like for like, we can't draw straight lines or everything. But but that, that's a lot of that's a lot of. Scope. I mean, it, it's a graph with other variables. Let's yeah, of course, of course, yeah, that. yeah. That's that's a terrible thing about Excel spreadsheets. You're just going to drag the row across, and you, you kind of think that it, it grows. So you not not quite proportionate, but certainly some formula taking yeah. into consideration. Wow. wow. So you, you define your market as home improvement. Is, is that, is, is that, is that, and, and that's an industry-wide term, the home improvement uh, category. That, that's a... Yes. That, that's a category, okay. So that would include, does it include things like furniture and stuff or is it more, more stuff you have to assemble yourself? So what, what? Well, it includes uh, 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 furniture and the likes. Uh, and so, for example, you know, you would find, you know, very typical stores that sell a combination of, of you know, hardware as well as, you know, outdoor garden furniture and et cetera, et cetera, all within that same category. It's, it's not always easy to define, I have to say, uh, because, you know, apart from the general trade, the modern trade, there are also department stores that sell components of what we sell. 
right. and also uh, uh, you know fixed price retailers that sell the component of what we sell as well. Uh, and so you know it's it's slightly grayer as a consequence, but the the fundamental formula is that you know stores that sell you know hardware furnishings uh, and everyday non-grocery retail necessities you know fall into this bucket. Okay. You know DIY is a weird thing. I mean, to me, and, and maybe it's personal to me, is that it's a bit like a toy shop for grown-ups, for grown-up men especially. You walk into a DIY shop and, and you look at all these amazing drills and, 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 and saws. You think, yes, I'm going to start building stuff myself. And of course, you buy them and then they just sit at home because it's, it's very hard to do DIY. Do you, think, do you think there are a lot of people who actually do actual DIY now more than before? Or Yeah, I think certainly that, that, that trend is changing. Uh, and, you know, as we uh, progress as a, as a, as a country, uh, the level of focus on doing it yourself increases. Certainly, you know, COVID-19 has been also a factor. As you know, you know, in the past, you know, if you needed something fixed, you know, we, you know, call our contractor and they'd come by, fix it and, you know, uh, send us their bill. Today, you know, you can't you can't have a contractor coming to your house. You can't get the plumber through, you can't get the carpenter through. And so, you know, the necessity to, to do things, you know, yourself, do it yourself, you know, has clearly increased. Uh, I think for us in our business, uh, the work from home, the stay at home, you know, all of that has also contributed, you know, positively to, to, to our, you know, category of retailing. But you know, I think it's also important to note that you know our, our business is, is is not one that is just do it yourself. Although the name would suggest, yeah, well, yeah. Ones, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, we are a store really for for everybody. So you know, if I took my the best example I have, which is you know my family. So you know, I have two daughters, uh, the wife, myself. You know, sometimes you know, you know, certainly before the pandemic, you know, with with, with the grandparents. You know, a, a weekend, you know, could be, could be leisure as well as work for me. And, you know, I wander through the store. I normally give my, my children, you know, 10 ringgit each. And they typically walk out with two or three little items, either from, you know, stickers and stationery products, highlighters, um, uh, gift items, costume jewelry items, or little toy items, although my two daughters, for some reason, are not that, that fond of toys, uh, surprisingly. Uh, my wife would be, you know, very happy, you know, finding household items for the kitchen, uh, for, the, for the bathroom. Uh, my father would, you know, typically, you know, be seeking out gardening odds and ends. And I will do my best to be a, to be a Mr. DIY and, you know, uh, seek out items that, you know, we need to, you know, whether it's for the bicycle lubricant, whether it's, you know, hardware items. I mean, incidentally, uh, you know, I have for you, this, this is one of my favorite items, uh, you know, during the lock, this is an electric shaver, which we retail, you know, at about 30 ringgit. I don't know wow. you see it. Mm -hmm, yeah. um, and, and I think the, the, the usefulness of it is, is as follows, you know, during lockdown, you know, we can't go to the barber. Hmm. And, you know, although some will argue whether I actually need a hair shaver or not, no. uh, for, for me, it's, it's, it, it really is, it, it's, you know, a great item to have, you know, in the house, you know, at a time like this. God. Purely because, you know, we, we just can't, we just can't go out. Yeah. And, and, you know, rather than have, you know, my hair, you know, growing, you know, in a slightly unfashionable way, it's <laughs> nice to just get a quick trim, although, as you can see, my hairstyle is not perfect. Is this done from home? Did you do it yourself? Your your current hairstyle? Or? Yes, I yes I did. Wow, <laughs> wow. Oh, uh, Actually, I didn't yesterday in preparation. Wow. Okay, all right, all right. I I, I, I should look for one of those. <laughs> I should look for one of those. Gosh, gosh. So, okay. So maybe um, can we? You mentioned the pandemic. Um, can, can we talk a little bit about how, how the, the effect of that in your business and whether things have changed? And, and also, I guess, one of, one of the, the things coming out of the pandemic was people going online more. Um, so how, how has online and, 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 and pandemic affected your, uh, your business? So, you know, we've been really fortunate 
I, I would say first of all, and you know, having some good fortune always helps. Uh, and in particular, you know, we we are a, an essential uh, goods retailer, and as a consequence, you know, for you know, for the better part, you know, we've been you know allowed to to, to stay open uh, during this pandemic, um, and you know, uh, that that clearly has helped. But you know, over and above that, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, the the the, the whole work from home, you know, has uh, you know continue to you know uh, support us the stay at home clearly supports us whether it's you know items such as you know adapters connectors electrical items for our home uh, as we work from home we need all of that uh, to in order to power our computers to uh, to, to, to to stay connected you know etc um, and, and, and that's been a, a very you know, significant part of you know, our business. Of course, on the other hand, you know, our, our toy stores, uh, you know, we have a, a brand of toy stores called Mr. Toy, and then that has you know, you know, stayed closed uh, during this period. Uh, so that's had the, you know, the, 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 the reverse sort of effect on us. But overall, you know, it's been, you know, uh, for us, you know, I think we've been you know, there to service the community and you know, fortunate to be, and, and grateful clearly to to be open, uh, we continue to use data, of course, uh, to 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 tailor our inventory to make it relevant. So you know, an item such as you know our the the electric hair clipper that you know I mentioned to you, uh, that for us you know has been a very popular item during this time, and you know we were able to uh, utilize our, our our analytics and data to realize early that it's needed in the community. And that's helped us to, you know, adjust our, react very quickly to, 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 to those needs and to adjust our, our procurement to support it. Okay, thank you. So just to remind everyone else on, 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 uh, to, who is logged into this call, um, you can ask questions. There's a Q&A question uh, chat room, you put your questions there and we'll hopefully uh, set right some time to, to ask Adrian to answer some of those questions. Okay, so thanks. So you, you mentioned Mr. Dollar and you also have another shop and Mr. Dollar and sorry, you mentioned Mr. Toy and you also have another brand called, called Mr. Dollar. I mean, is, is, that, is that part of Mr. DIY or is it, are these different shops in different markets? Yeah, so th th this is, th these are all businesses which are owned by, by the company. Mm -hmm. uh, we have basically branded them separately. The offering is different. So, you know, for example, Mr. Dollar, uh, came about through our research of, you know, global fixed price retailers. Um, you know, I don't know whether, you, you know, you are uh, familiar, but uh, fixed price retailing, which typically falls under discount retailers, you know, have been, you know, incredibly popular and successful throughout the world. And, you know, many years ago, we, we decided to, you know, do a road trip to review, you know, you know all of these businesses to you know get a better understanding of you know what what made them work you know why they were successful why they had you know you know an above average return on equity you know etc and you know we concluded that you know fixed price retailing very good business model profitable business model and and you know i think if, if you apply that context to the malaysian environment you know a much needed business model to support you know uh you know lower income groups, you know, to, well, to be frank, you know, to support all communities, right? Everybody loves, you know, great prices, yeah. everybody loves a bargain, you know, working class, you know, you know, white collar, blue collar, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. Everybody loves that, you know, to, to, to get a great, a great bargain. And, you know, fixed price retailing is a formula that allows us to, you know, to keep prices low. And in fact, to give consumers the confidence to walk into our store and pick up whatever they like, knowing that the price is fixed. So it's either $2 or it's, it's either one ringgit or something like that, is it? Everything is so we, 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 our, our formula is two ringgit and five ringgit. So everything in the store is either two or five. So, you know, for $2, you can get, you know, everything from, you know, a large bottle of Coke, you know, for, for two ringgit, you know, you know, 10 average size eggs, you know, for two ringgit, you know, et cetera. 
And oh, you then, sell food as well. It's not, it's not just. Uh, so, so in, in, in our dollar stores, we sell food as well as non food items, uh, unlike our Mr. DIY brand. I see. So, this uh, is I, a separate I, shop. It's a separate it's shop a altogether, right? It's not separate shop. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have dollar and then we have Mr. Toy. So, for us, toy stores came about, you know, as we started to review offerings in, in, in malls in, in the country. And we realized that, you know, uh, there was a need for, you know, affordable, affordable toys. Uh, you know, for those, you know, that, that you know, have families and, and, and young children, um, certainly pre-pandemic when they were, you know, children's parties, if you bought something, you know, to, to, to take to a, you know, a children's party, you would know that, you know, for an average of 100 ringgit, you will almost certainly come out with no change from a atypical branded toy store. And, you know, we wanted to offer affordable toys. Uh, and so, you know, we utilized our, I guess, our network in, in sourcing, as well as the fact that, you know, we were already in the toy business, you know, part of what we saw in Mr. DIY stores included toys to enhance our offering. And at the same time, you know, provide a, a, a new retail vertical that was, you know, I think re required or, you know, sorely missed, I think, for, uh, for families in suburban, you know, uh, shopping malls. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so we had this formula, you know, it, it, you know, it has been, you know, you know, fairly successful, I would describe it as. The reason why I use the word fairly is, you know, for the last three months now, we have been closed, unfortunately. You know, and that's because of the MCO rule. That, because uh, of the MCO, yes. Right. right. Okay. Okay. Wow. wow. So uh, the two things come uh, come to my mind from from what you just said. One is one is uh, how you manage to cut out the middleman and then really bring bring the economies of scale and give it to the customer. And and the second is is about the future of retail and and what retail is going to look like um, after the pandemic. So. Could, could you could you say something on both? I mean, first of all, you know how how, how you cut out a middleman, right? So, how much low, uh, how do you do that? And then what what do you, what does the competition have to say if if you can offer such such low prices? Well, you know, I, I can't really speak for competition, but you know what I, I I can say is this: you know, our our typical formula really is to to be able to source directly from suppliers, you know, best quality for a given price, you know, best quality where you know, we're, we're, we're fully possible uh, and to negotiate, you know, on uh, on a mass scale in order to, 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 to drive, you know, as competitive prices as possible. Uh, we typically negotiate with, you know, purchase from, you know, significant, you know, global suppliers. Uh, and, you know, our ability to do so is a function of being, you know, having the scale and being able to buy in the volumes that they require in order for us to be a, you know, a top tier customer of theirs. But the important formula, of course, is that, you know, we translate all of those efficiencies together with data to tell us, you know, what we should be buying in the volumes and quantities that we should be buying at. Right. And then using, uh, you know, using our, um, our operating network to be able to efficiently, you know, import product, distribute product, get it out into our stores, uh, and then to use that to, uh, you know, to benefit the customer ultimately, providing them, you know, with prices that they love. Yeah, because no, so, one of the things things like Lazada and Shopee have done is is actually cut out in the middleman to some extent, right? Because you can now buy items direct from China, and and you find out how. You know, remarkably inexpensive they are. I mean, I still can't get over that I can buy something and it's shipped all the way from China to my house for under ten ringgit. I mean, it's just it's just crazy. Uh, but 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 it does happen. Do do you can you compete with even those prices? You, you... sure. So so perhaps I can you know just talk a mm. little bit about that as well. So you know, e-commerce obviously is is something that we have our eyes very focused on uh, today. Uh, you know, our proportion of revenue from e-commerce is small uh, as a you know a percentage of sales is under one percent uh, and you know i think it, it's it's for a reason i think we have you know traditionally focused on brick and mortar and you know that's not an uncommon phenomenon for very specific kinds of retailers around the world 
So discount retailers, you know, are a very big part of that, and and uh, of, the, of that phenomenon, being able to uh, to to have brick and mortar with the convenience is important. And you know, I'll explain it to you, you know, as follows. You see, our, our average basket size is sub thirty ringgit, is under thirty ringgit. Wow. And by the time you you know take into account cost of sales, you know, you're really talking about a a gross profit, you know. You know, low teens. By the time you know you account for uh, fulfillment costs, if you are in China, the logistics of it would be, you know, the exporter, the freight, the importer, the the local fulfillment. You know, all of those costs are significant. Even for us, you know, supplying from at the local level, those costs are very material part of that low teens basket gross profit. Basically, you know, in our vertical of retailing, uh, e-commerce is at best very, very low in profit margin, at best. Okay. Um, but having said that, you know, we have fully invested in our e-commerce offering. Uh, we have, uh, you know, one of the first fully dedicated, you know, robotics operated, you know, e-commerce uh, facilities in the country, and that facility uh, services our our e-commerce offering all over the country. So we supply, you know, only requiring that last mile logistics. So it would be lower than typical, you know, a global logistics uh, formula in order to to support uh, e-commerce. Uh, secondly, you know, we have one you know fundamental advantage over you know uh, the uh, e-commerce marketplaces, we have a very, uh, you know, significant ability to offer uh, omni-channel e-commerce, so click and collect. Uh, the reason why click and collect is, you know, important or, you know, will be, you know, much more important is, is because the cost of that last mile logistics, you know, that, that few ringgit that we require to, 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 to provide that, you know, we get to save and, you know, you know, our formula really is to, you know, provide efficiency and where uh, we can do so and where, you know, uh, where the um, omni-channel offering becomes more significant, then, you know, we will obviously be in the best place to, to support that. Okay. Oh, interesting. So, so how do you see retail for, for you know, after this, after post-pandemic retail? I mean, there's so many, re there's so many shopping malls, so many shops that are closed down. Um, how, how do you see it? Do you think retail will just go back to how it was, or, or uh, do you think it's going to be a fundamental change in, in retail? Well, no, well, I, I, I'm pretty confident that you know, you know, certainly in, in our area of retailing, uh, you know, the the customer tra traffic will come back. Uh, you know, I think what's happened during this pandemic, you know, the very clear effect of the pandemic is that uh, traffic volumes have fallen. Uh, through this pandemic as people, you know, stay away from busy areas and, you know, by and large, we remain at home. The, the side effect of that is twofold. One is, you know, our customers are much more purposeful when they come to our stores. So, you know, our basket sizes have, you know, have, you know, pre and post pandemic or pre and in pandemic, you know, been up, you know, 20, 30% typically. And so whilst we've lost some traffic, customer traffic, because everybody, you know, chooses to stay at home, rightfully so as well, uh, the, the customer that typically comes through the door, you know, is very much more focused and, you know, is there to purchase and sometimes in, you know, in preparation of some future need as well. That's true. Actually, if you go to a shop now, you go because you want to buy something. You don't just go to, to browse. You, you have a mission. Mm -hmm. You go out. Oh, yeah. I think we are also very well positioned uh, for another reason. You see, our, our, our stores between uh, standalone stores, you know, and mall-based stores is coming up to 50-50. So oh, yeah. we are almost halfway, you know, having stores that are standalone. Now, during this uh, these conditions, as you know, um, customers avoid busy areas. 
So, you know, malls are closed or, you know, malls are busier. Okay. You now many try to, you know, to, to be conscious of. And where you need items, it's very much more convenient to drive straight up to a standalone store, a shop bought store, walk in, you know, in, in the past, you know, it's been, you know, you know, to buy, you know, four items, maybe now it's, you know, slightly more than that. And get what you need, do your shopping, leave, get in your car, I guess, sanitize your hands, you know, hopefully with a yeah. Mr. DIY sanitizer, take your Mr. DIY sanitizer, <laughs> mask off and quickly drive home. Right. And then, yeah. you know, change your clothes and do whatever you have we to do. Go to whatever it is, yeah. You know, yeah. Feel comfortable that we are, yeah. you know, protected against this pandemic. Gosh. That's funny, isn't it? Because we thought that retail malls would destroy the corner shops. But it's the other way around now. It looks like everybody would much rather go to a small shop near their house than, than go and go to a big mall. Well, you know, I, I don't think it's quite so, you know, cut and dry to mm. think. Uh, I think in, in, in the heart of Malaysian society, uh, malls, you know, have a very special place. <laughs> I would say. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, I guess you could say so, that. So these Malaysians love going to, to, to malls. Yeah. That's you true, know, my, my family love going to the mall. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my retired father for exercise loves going to the mall. Even, you know, curiously, you know, my, my father is an 80 year retiree and, you know, he, 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 you know, he doesn't like the weather so much, but he doesn't mind getting his exercise if he wanders into a, a big mall and, and does three rounds around it and get Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. And, yeah that's and very US kind of thing, it. right? Mall walking. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Oh my and goodness. Unfortunately now things have changed, but you know, yeah. I'm sure it will come back. It will come back. Okay, that's good. I mean, you, you, you know it. You've got 800 shots. So you know what you're talking about. Other people pontificate, but I think you have a far better sense. So you know, you've got this badge here. You're going to tell us something about your badge, right? which is... Uh, yeah. yeah, So so I mean, this badge says, you know, I'm COVID vaccinated. And, you know, I think one of the challenges, one of the challenges that we've had, you know, as a, as a company with, you know, 12,000 over employees is ensuring that, you know, our customers and our colleagues are safe. And, you know, I think apart from, you know, ensuring they have all the kit for it, you know, the face shields, the masks, the sanitizer, you know, the, the best formula that we can think of, and you know, it's, it's a formula supported by government, is to ensure that, you know, as many of our staff, you know, are vaccinated. We have just passed um, the 300 mark. Uh, and what I mean by the 300 mark is, you know, we have over 300 stores today for which every single one of our employees has been vaccinated. That's great. And so, you know, we're giving out little badges of honor, if you like. And this I is see, I honor. see, okay. For everybody in our company that has been vaccinated. A to, you know, it's a nice warm reminder for us, but, you know, B, it's also a reminder to everybody uh, to get vaccinated because that's the best way for us to, to do our bit for, you know, during this, this uh, you know, COVID-19. Uh, great, great. And, and you've got some CSR things planned as well, like you were saying earlier. Yes, so, I mean, CSR for us, you know, has been, you know, a particularly strong focus uh, since the pandemic started. You know, if, if we look back, rewind one year or so ago when we were completely locked down and, you know, we had curiously felt relatively helpless, I think, at the time as we were all at home. As a company, we decided to focus on CSR. And, you know, to give you an idea of it, you know, we, you know, we, we utilize our network, our sourcing capability to import everything from, you know, PPE, mask, shields, etc. And, you know, and, and at the time there was a huge, you know, global shortage of masks. And, you know, we, I think at the time, during the months of between March and, and, and May, we imported about 30 plane loads of masks. So they all had to come in. 30 plane loads? That's 30, either A320s or, 
737s came through with fully loaded with just masks, PPE, and wow. related COVID-19 essential. And much, much of that, you know, we, you know, we, we, we made sure we utilize to service the community. Uh, some we donated ourselves, some we helped other NGOs, uh, 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 support other NGOs uh, through donations and, and our CSR projects. Um, I think tomorrow we will we'll also, you know, push ahead with a project to help um, uh, provide um, PPE and other COVID essentials to, to over 100 uh, 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 frontline facil government facilities throughout the country in, in, in 11 states. Um, and this again you know, is part of our you know, focus on, 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 on sustainability, on CSR. Um, I think over and above that, you know, many other uh, other projects. I think we've run something like you know sixty projects uh, uh, this year, um, many related to you know COVID sort of uh, areas, um, including you know food banks. You know, we've supported many food banks with much of our product from Mr. Dollar Stores. Uh, we've supported uh, uh, you know, the white flag campaigns uh, in, in local communities that we've operated in. Uh, we supported, you know, the you know local, uh, uh, as I said, frontline facilities, not just healthcare facilities, not just PPVs, but you know also the the, the councils, the uh, you know the the local forces, police forces that have helped, uh, you know, ensure security and safety during this, you know, very very fantastic, fantastic. That's 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 really great. That's really great. So um, we've got we've got a, we've got quite a few questions lined up here, Adrian. Um, maybe I'll read out some of them out. The first one is um, with the current economic situation. This is from Chek Muhammad Faiz bin Wahab, and he says, given the current economic situation, uh, situation, do you have any plans to reduce the number of stores? Um, the answer is no. Um, in fact, we are doing quite the reverse of that. You know, we've added I think something like ninety three stores for the first half of the year. Uh, we have a target of uh, 175 for the full year. So, you know, we'll continue to add stores uh, during the year, uh, during the, the, the rest of this year, once I think conditions allow us to do so. Uh, during this period of lockdown, obviously, we've not been able to, to, to add new stores, but, you know, we hope to, you know, to, to play catch up in the second half of the year uh, and to, you know, to, 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 to hopefully... That's good. So you have faith that the nation consuming, consuming consumption will, will, will rise. Will, will go up. I would say we have great faith. Um, yeah. I agree with you. I mean, I agree with you. I think I think we'll we'll have a huge bounce back in the economy after 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 this crisis. After we get over the crisis. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's not not, not just you know my faith or even your faith, mm. but you know we've had you know you know independently verified market mm. data uh, to suggest that you know in the next five years up to 2025, you know the home improvement retail sector. Mm. Will grow at I think something of the order of ten point seven percent compounded. Wow! So the, mar the market has historically grown at double digits, and you know we expect it to you know continue to grow at double digits as uh, you know uh, I guess uh, you know our customers are you know start to be able to to move more freely. Okay, so someone from the edge, Sulhi from the edge, is asking: Will your will your earnings meet analyst estimates and which means that you'll earn more than what Nestle does. Um, is there something you can answer or? I cannot answer that Yeah, you question. can't answer. I, mean, I think all of you know all, all the rules regarding uh, these kind of disclosure things. So we talk, someone asked about your button, but you, you explain that. Uh, Ang Zinu wants to know um, why Mr. DIY stands out from, how does Mr. DIY stand out from a lot of e-commerce, which also provide low price products? Um, you've answered that, I think. I think you've gone through yeah, I mean, and, and yeah. maybe one other point that, that's useful, you know, I think for our particular you know, vertical of retailing, you know, quite often customers want to pick up the product, hmm. want to see what they're getting. That's right. That's right. It's just like holding it in your hand. There's uh, nothing like holding it in your hand. There's right. nothing like, you know, being able to, uh, to feel, touch, see firsthand what you're hmm. getting. Assess the quality of the product. I think that's probably another important aspect that, you know, in particular what we sell that is important. It's, it's very different if you're buying a Nike pair of shoes and you know exactly, you know, what you're getting. Mm. Uh, in our case, you know, you, you need to pick it up. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I agree. So Ron Osman wanted to 
talk know about Mr. Dollar, you've talked about Mr. Dollar. Uh, key MR says car wash items. Can you have more car wash items? Is that something you sell? Is car wash is car wash a category in, 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 uh, yes. that you? Yes, we do. We sell all, all forms of you know auto accessories. You know the, the smaller ticket items, car wash polish uh, mm -hmm. tools to, to to help you. Uh, you know windshields. Um, uh, sunscreens, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, I, I will take note of that. <laughs> okay. so, uh, I, I guess we okay. will review the, that. Yeah, all yeah, have a look at, at, at all the car wash, uh, all the car wash paraphernalia. Um, Akhil Aizuddin has a question about uh, having a mentor and who was your mentor, how do mentors help you? But I said, it's a larger question, Adrian. How does, you know, we've got a lot of students uh, tuned in and, and how do they grow up and become Adrian? Ah, um, I, I think it's fair to say, you know, I have been very, very fortunate in, in my 30, oops, I'm giving away my age, my, my <laughs> career, you know, I've had, you know, many, many mentors along the way. Uh, and, you know, for that matter, many great employers actually uh, along the way, um, you know, at, at, at Mr. DIY, you know, my mentor is, is, is the founder of the company, you know, he's been, you know, very inspirational in in not just thought leadership, but in you know how we deal, think about everything from you know process about you know focus on what's important about you know the whole philosophy about you know how our business operates. In Credor, you know, as you know, Credor was one of the you know is one of the leading you know private equity firms in the country. You know, the leadership there is is is, is super led by you know Brahma uh, Vasudevan. And clearly, uh, 20 years before that, you know, I worked for, you know, uh, one of the leading investment banks that you, you know, uh, Dato Sharon, you know, have been, you know, uh, a very significant member of as well, CIMB. CIMB, as you know, started as a very small investment bank and eventually became one of the largest GLC. And, you know, you know I was very fortunate to have a great mentor there in the form of, you know, Dato Nazir Razak. Uh, so, you know, I've been really fortunate. I think I've been really fortunate to, to have, you know, great colleagues to work with, you know, all around, you know, from my time at CIMB, Credo, Mr. DIY, uh, great leaders to look up to, great mentors to look up, up to. Um, as I said, as, as, as it's true, you know, with, for everybody, everybody needs a bit of luck. Um, and, you know, I think probably what's more important than just that component is, how to make your own luck, you know, I think, you know, for the young university students out there, you know, I, I would say it's important to be out there to talk to people, make friends, learn from others. Uh, and that helps you, you know, create your own opportunity, create your own, you know, I guess, luck. Sitting at home, as, as unfortunately we're doing now, uh, alone doesn't make it happen, right? We, we, need, we need to be actively you know, seeking uh, opportunity actively, you know, really actively being out there trying to make a difference, wanting to make a difference. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Adrian. And I'm sure that's good advice for everyone, not just the students, but everyone. Um, I have a little bit of time left. Before I go to the other questions, for the entrepreneurs who, are, who have dialed in, who are, who are listening in, you know, how did they grow their business to become the size of a Mr. DIY? How, how did Mr. DIY grow from one or two stores to, to 800? I mean, what's, what's the secret? How, how do you get there? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I would say two things, or well, actually three things. So starting with, you know, clearly having, you know, the loyalty of our customers, but, you know, on the internal aspect of it, you know, uh, Having a system that supports the team is, you know, hugely important. I think to, to build a business of scale, uh, I think, you know, one must be very systematic. And, you know, the founders of our company were very systematic about setting up that system. Uh, in, in, it's not common, uncommon for us in, in the company to say that the system runs the company. And, and that is, you know, so true. Without a good system, uh, you know, you, the, the decisions, the minutia of decisions cannot be automated. And, and this is what we have today. You know? That's really interesting. So they started off the company like that. It's not, it's not something where 
they just went on based on based on instinct or or, or... well yeah no, there, there are two components to that i think one hmm. is you remember we are a very young company hmm. so, you know we are only 15 years old and you know we started in 2005 i think what's significant about oh that my God. from 2005 from nothing 2005 to number 23 in Bursa. wow what, what's significant about 2005 is you know you know we had many years of you know learnings from other businesses that have been through the the the, the era of computerization as you know you know computerization was so new that you know when we had y2k everybody panicked for those that are old enough to remember what y2k stands for so you know we were you know as a company founded many years after y2k so we had that benefit of course you know everything didn't start from ground zero and you know it it's a process of continuous improvement. And as for all of us in our everyday life, in our careers, in, in how we educate ourselves, continual improvement is you know, hugely important. And you know, our company you know, has had the benefit of you know, continuing to be open to learning and evolving gradually over time to, 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 to develop a system that you know, suits us, that is you know, curated for what we need to do. Did your founders have any? Did the founders have any background in retail, or did they just decide to go into it because they analyze the market? Or how? Well, you know, I think our, our founders, I, I would describe them as you know, being very down to earth, uh, mathematically minded uh, uh, individuals, and so the mathematics, the process, the nuts and bolts. Uh, the system of it, you know, hugely important, and you know, you know, they've had that background to help them in in, in this journey, uh, you know, going forward. Okay, okay. No, I mean, it's, it's inspirational to everyone that you can take a company and from nothing and within fifteen years make it make it one of the largest corporations in Malaysia. I mean, that's that's a fantastic achievement. But you came in where you didn't come in at the beginning. You you came in with with uh, through Credo, is that right? Well, oh, no, I, at the time of Credo. I, I first got involved with the company, you know, when uh, when I was working with uh, Credo in uh, I started in Credo in, in 2015, and you know through that uh, uh, that time, um, you know, we started Credo became an, uh, invested in in Mr DIY, and you know I got involved in the company. When I left Credo, uh, um, you know the uh, Founders of the company invited me to 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 you know to to, to join them, and you know, I, I guess it's fair to say is you know one of the best decisions of, of my life to to, to join that this is wonderful group of, of, yeah. of individuals, yeah. you know, fantastic company that is you know, um, yeah, a pleasure to work with. And on that topic, you know, let me also just say you know we continue to seek out you know talented, energetic individuals, you know. Uh, be they, you know, at the working level or university graduates from, you know, all our, you know, local universities or international universities. Um, so, you know, if you are interested in a, in a slightly different career in retailing, you know, in a business that, you know, is growing, uh, you know, we'd be, you know, very happy to, you know, to welcome applications, I would say. <laughs> no, that's brilliant. Give me a couple of minutes. So, Brita Haryan has a... Uh, uh, a few questions. One is, will the fixed stock, will the fixed price stocks? I I think they refer to Mr. Dollar. Is that is that? Are you going to grow that? Second, what are the consumer spending trends right now? I think you more or less answered that. We can add to that if you want to. And uptrend fixed price stores show consumer spending. Okay, really. Uh, uh, the, the fact that more people are going to uh, fixed price stores, Mr. Dollar, so does it show that consumers don't have money, or does it show the uh, something else? I, I think that's really hard to, to, to distill down that to that specific an area. And, and, but, you know, I, I think it's fair to say that everybody loves value for money. Right. Nobody will turn down the, you know, value for money. And mm. that's the whole basis of our retail formula, to be able to offer value for money. You know, we are a, a business that offers, you know, always low prices. That's our slogan. And you know we we you know we treat that very seriously and 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 it's close to our heart. Okay, 
Um, another question is on the stock. So they say, uh, Anonymous says that I go to one shop and buy a product, and then I go to another shop and I can't seem to find the, the, that same product. Um, that's, of course, it's something you alluded to just now about how you have different strategies for different stores. Yeah. yeah I mean, so, sometimes that happens, as you know, to, to have, you know, complete, you know, uh, to have it completely homogenous across 800 stores is, 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 is a challenge I would describe it as. Uh, but you know, over and above that, you know, our stores in our stores we are very focused on this concept of treasure hunt. Uh, and you know, for us, we we don't you know in a typical you know store planogram we don't necessarily reserve a spot for a particular product. If a product is out of stock, we will have something else to to, to put in its place. And at the same time, you know, we continue to let our um, inventory range evolve in order to keep product interesting, keep it relevant, keep it fresh, and surprise our customers with, with great items. Right. That's part of the whole, you know, formula of our store. So, you know, we, we do apologize, you know, if, <laughs> if an item is out of stock, um, although I will say our customer service will be able to tell you, you know, where you can find that particular item. So please do not hesitate to call our hotline and you know they will tell you which stores have a particular item you know if you have the the the, the product code product code so in a in a typical store how many items are there i mean sorry different types no, of it, products there is a little one. you know it's typically give or take around 20,000 items 20,000 different types of things 20,000 20, things in typical in a typical store so some will be higher some will be lower uh, but you know as i said you know uh, we, we, we do vary it slightly. We also do vary, as I mentioned earlier, depending on the demographic of the area, mm. whether it's a residential area, whether it's an urban office area, whether it's a rural community, a suburban area, or an ultra urban area. So, you know, that, that has some distinctions. Uh, you know, having, you know, you know, farm boots, for example, you know, will not suit a, you know, a super urban area like Monkiara, for example, whereas, you know, it would work, you know, you know, more rural sort of wow. Yeah, you, you have to have computers, right? There's no way you can keep track of 20,000 items unless you have a super system, right? Yeah. Can't be done. Wow. Wow. Uh, um, almost was yet. So got a question here from Ace Hardware, Home Pro, All Home. Their basket size is within 200 to 300 ringgit. Yet yours is below 30 ringgit. How do you make money? And shouldn't you uh, be trying to get higher basket sizes? Sorry, I'm paraphrasing. Adrian Toh didn't use exactly those questions, but that's that, the that's question, yeah. Yeah, you know, look, for, for us, you know, we, we, we let the data decide what we sell. So if, 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 if the data tells us that, you know, uh, you know, we should be selling, you know, larger items, we do so. If the data tells us otherwise, we also do so. Uh, but, you know, I think the reason why we, um, we make a profit is because we use scale to benefit everybody. Uh, we have in a typical year, so this year, for example, we are on track to uh, to complete the year with over 100 million transactions. So put it into context, that's 100, 100 million transactions. So in a typical month, give or take, you know, we are doing, you know, close to 10 million transactions, say. That's mind-boggling. Ten million. So, yeah. So let me let me just say that again. Um, we expect to to conclude over a hundred million transactions in a given year. One hundred million. So three times the population of the country. Which we thank all our you know obviously the, the community for. We, but it's not because we sell large items and have a large basket necessarily, but because. Uh, you know, we provide everyday essentials at, you know, everyday prices for your everyday person. You, have, you must have the most contact with, with the customer of any big company in Malaysia. I mean, how many people have 100 million transactions? Maybe the post office. I don't think the petrol stations have 100 million transactions. I mean, that's, that's 
That's for non-flavored. Your, your, your knowledge, your knowledge, your knowledge of what the Malaysian consumer, what the Malaysian people want, really, is, 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 is incredible. I wish you could have a look at all your data and tell us, tell us a lot. <laughs> I loved about it. And, and do you know your customers? Do most people buy by cash or do they use a credit card or some other way which can identify the customers? Uh, well, ca cash is still a big component. Mm -hmm. uh, I think across the pandemic, credit cards have, have picked up quite a fair bit, but so has uh, wallets. Ah, okay. So wallets, you know, started at zero, you know, 24 mm. months ago. And now it's a, I, I guess it's probably fair to say a material single digit number. Wow. Okay. That's so that, that, that all should grow. And, you know, and, and, you know, as more young people come to our stores as well, you know, the wallets are obviously popular amongst the young and, you know, that, that, that certainly has started to, 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 to be significant. But you think we're quite a long way from being a cashless society? We, we are, we are fair, we are, we are with <laughs> Like cash, especially if you buy something with two ringgit, right? You might as well just pay two ringgit and take out your. That, that, that's, that's certainly part of the formula. You know, you, you know, if you, if you spend twenty or thirty ringgit, it's just too convenient to pay in cash. So. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Listen, Adrian, it's been a fantastic hour. We've actually overrun our time. I think, uh, I, I think I, I've learned a lot. I've really enjoyed it, and 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 I'm just in awe already of 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 the success of Mr. DIY, and how and and I think. I, and what I love about it is that, you know, it shows that Malaysia is a big market and, you know, there's a lot to be done in Malaysia. You don't have to go out. And you're not going, you, Mr. DIY is, is, is a Malaysian company, right? You, you're not looking at ASEAN or, or, or anything else. Yeah, so, so first, firstly, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, I think the, the market is big enough here mm -hmm. for us to do, you know, very, uh, to do well, for retailers to do well. I think it's all about, you know, finding the, the common denominator across the, the, the customer base of what uh, they need and servicing those needs. Uh, you know, in a market like, like this, which, you know, from what we can see, you know, it's growing at, you know, double digit, there is a lot of room to work. Brilliant. Okay, well, listen, Adrian, thank you so much for, 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 for spending time with us and we learned a lot, so thank you. And, you know, a virtual, a virtual applause for <laughs> Thank you. thank you. Thank you so thank much you. for your time. It's no, really no, good. pleasure. Pleasure. Lovely to see you. Right. Thank you, everyone. So that that that's it for from us from MIDF Conversations. Thank you. So you can press leave. Uh, on, on, on. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks.